You hear that? Yikes. Well, good morning again. We all know that I, this is not my comfort zone, but when the Lord tells you to do something, you do it. Uh, this is International Day of Prayer. How do I get this to advance? There it is. There it is. Yeah, I got it. International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. What exactly is that? Is It is a special time, not just here at Westside, but this is a special time that their church is gathered. Hopefully they're gathered, not just here at Westside. This is a worldwide uh, time for prayer for our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted around the world. These guys are standing boldly in places where Christianity and Christians, Christ, are not welcome. But they're out there anyway. What is, what is, what are we to do? Biblical disciples are somebody sent by God to proclaim the message of Christ at any cost. You got to determine what price you are willing to pay to proclaim the message of Christ either here in Sharpsville or wherever the Lord leads you around the world. But you got to preach Christ boldly. We're going to take a minute before we go into this video. Let me get my paper set here. I want to read something and then we'll get to this quick video. But I wanted to read, as Pastor was teaching the first class, this, I, I believe, I was in the office back there, but I believe he went through these scriptures but Matthew 5 9 where we are in the life of the Messiah blessed are the peacekeepers for they shall be called sons of God but blessed number verse 10 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for their theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And that is a, a, a perfect example of what these folks are, are going through in all these areas around the world. Before we get to the video, uh, areas of Colombia are hostile to the advance of the gospel. These red zones are sections of Colombia controlled by Marxist guerrillas like the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia and other paramilitary groups who are active in persecuting Christians. Uh, before I go on, sections of Colombia controlled by Marxist guerrillas. Make sure when you go to the voting polls Tuesday, be careful who you vote for. Right. Because one of them's a Marxist. Right. Despite the danger and opposition, faithful men and women bring their families to live among and share Christ with the very people who are opposed to their message. Those who serve to advance the gospel in the most difficult and dangerous places in our world to follow Christ are not super Christians. They have heard from God and are obedient to his calling. They lived out the words of Jesus recorded in John 20, 21. As he summarized the Father's mission, even so I am sending you, and they count the cost of doing so. This is what really got me with this. One indigenous organization that recruits pastors to serve in red zones requires them to sign a pledge stating the following. I am as right with God as I know how to be. I have said goodbye to my family and friends. And the third one is I will not run. Wow. Frontline workers who serve in Columbia's red zones are not few in numbers. Pastors and faithful Christians, along with their families, are ready to serve despite the dangers. Now, hope this plays.
we may watch a video. We're going to make it. They said five, right? If you're late, continue. Have a good day. Tell me you were a pastor. I am. Your wife, her name is Gloria. And your baby Samuel. As you can see, I know everything about you. And I don't even know your name. Marcos. Marcos. Would you like to come in, Marcos? I can offer you some coffee. You talk to me. I know you also talk to my rivals. How do I know where your loyalties lie? We only serve the Lord. If you want to keep that up, you will join with the other pastors in the area and work for me. If they are on your payroll, they are no longer pastors. Good luck, it's me and not some other guerrillas. They would shoot you in the head in front of your family. Consider my offer carefully. We'll go back tomorrow. Father, please give us the strength to stand in every test. And may your salvation reach many through us here in the red zone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My mother was a Christian. something for you. Hold on a minute. Give this to your man and take one for yourself. You think you will make me a Christian by giving me a Bible? <laughs> I hope that you will listen to God. I will listen when I lie wounded on the battlefield. Then I will listen. Where are you going? 
I'm sorry, where is Marcus? You know Marcus? Yes. He's dead. How did you know him? He was my friend. Are you the pastor who gave him the Bibles? I am. <clears throat> Can you bring more? Please. Pastors and their families are sent by God to advance the gospel of Colombia's dangerous friends. Pray for these frontline workers as they faithfully share the gospel and face the consequences. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me. That's what he did. If you want, you can turn your Bibles to John 20. That's going to be our main passage today. John 20. We're going to be looking at 19 to 21. And I know today is Persecution Sunday, or, you know, day for praying for persecuted Christians. But if I had to name the message, it would be simply sent. But what we just saw, let me get my eyes open here too. I think I have 20 in my Bible. Thank you. We're going to be looking at 19 to 21. But how can we be inspired by their example, what we've seen there from the Martinez family? What does the scripture say about being sent? Looking at John 20, 19 to 21. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, in, were, were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. And I bet that our pastor could probably take that simple little sentence and pull six weeks out of it. That's a powerful, that's a powerful piece of scripture, but that's not our focus, focal point today. And he said to them, peace be with you. When he has said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord Jesus and said, when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you as the father has sent me. Even so, I am sending you. We're going to look at four points for the word sent. The first one is the priority. And I'm not good with this clicker in my own papers here, but the first one is the priority of being sent. Jesus came and stood among them. Jesus came because the Father willed it. God sent, the, God sent Jesus here for us. God's priority is to restore fellowship with humanity. It is his Messeo Dei. That means it is Latin for mission of God, or it could be sending of God. But the first, I saw this and it, uh, it caught my, uh, God's vision is Christ's mission. It could be now Christ's vision is our mission. Amen. In that uh, passage there, Jesus came and stood among them. Look at the word Jesus. This is a, a little bit of a review because we all, uh, we have great teachers here and we all know what that is about this. So G Jesus, Jesus is the one and only son of God. We know that from John 3.16. You can mark these scriptures down. I'm not going to read them all. But John 3.16 and Mark 1.1. 1, 1. And Jesus is also God. There, I'm forgetting this clicker again. Look at John, you're in John, look at 10, 1030. It's the one I picked out for this. John 1030. 
simple little verse. Simple little six words that says, I and my father are one. Jesus is God. Amen. Jesus is also the Messiah. You can look at Matthew 16, 16. I lost my bookmark. I don't know if you know, but that's my mama's graduation picture. I used it for a bookmark. <laughs> Matthew 16. Let me get there. Mama got me sidetracked there for a minute. 16, 16. Simon. Simon Peter said, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus is the Messiah. The second word there, Jesus came. Jesus came and emptied himself, taking on the form of a bond servant. Find that, look over in Philippians. Philippians. Let me... Pastor Burris, I should have marked these down. But I... Philippians 2 7. We're looking at the word came. We're just, you'll see how this all comes together when I get through with it. Philippians 2 7. I'm going to start in verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. Jesus left his home in heaven and he came down to earth for us, not because he had to. Jesus came to seek those who were lost. Luke 19 tells us that, 1910. Again, we're not going to read all these. If I go too fast, you can... Uh, I got them wrote down. You can get them from me after. But Jesus came to seek those and save those who were lost. The last part of that scripture stood among them. Look at John 1, 14. Again, you probably don't need to turn to all of these. You don't want to, but John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus became flesh living among humanity. Two points to that is Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. Or the, I'm sorry, the second point to that. Mm -hmm. Scripture... Scripture teaches that Jesus is fully God. Quickly turn over to Titus 2.13. Titus 2.13. Again, I'm going to begin in verse 11. Uh, Pastor taught us that these are three phases of righteousness. Verse 11, for the, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That is the past. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That's the present. Verse 13 is the one we're looking at. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the future. Amen. Scripture also teaches that Jesus is fully human. Again, he's 100% God, 100% human. God's priority should be our priority. Biblical disciples must have your ears focused on God's calling. You might, and when you get called, get your feet moving and obey. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says... Uh, this the, the reference from this. We are ambassadors sent by God to tell others of his appeal. We are to be we are to be reconciled to God. As we see in that movie, the Martinez family in Colombia. 
an untold number of other frontline workers, the names of which we may never know. I believe when we get to heaven, we will meet some of these people. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to come up to you and they're not going to be strangers. What? I lost my place. They're out serving in the world's most difficult and dangerous mission fields. They've heard the call and they are obeying at any cost. Second point, the peace of being sent. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. If the priority of God is to restore fellowship with humanity that sin destroyed, what was the message of Jesus as he was sent to humanity? You turn over to Romans 3, we're going to spend a little bit of time there when I get down below here a little bit. Gonna start Romans. Just look at Romans three twenty three real quick. We're gonna be in Romans three here in a minute. But Romans three twenty three. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You can stay there. I'm gonna look for turn over to Romans five eight, where it says, "God's word says, but God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us." Looking at the word peace there, it's a Greek word used. The Greek word used in that uh, passage there is Irene. Close enough. Uh, I'm not great with Greek. I'm Italian. So I'm not good with that either. But the Greek, that word is commonly used in the greeting of Christ after his resurrection. Then the latter half of that, you're always delayed reaction over there. <laughs> Jesus said, peace be with you. The peace there is the same Greek word, but it is uh, with a greater meaning of the peace of God, peace with God. Those who are not yet in a relationship with God. How do you keep your papers up where you can read and look at them? You don't have that problem, do you? But those who are not yet in a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ are living lives in turmoil. They are not at peace with God. Paul describes a person who is not part of the family of God as the following, and this is where we're going to get into um, the book of Romans here a little bit. They are not righteous. They are Their throat is an open grave. Their tongues deceive. Their feet are quick to shed blood. Their paths are ruined in misery. The fear of God is not in their eyes, and the way of peace they have not known. Look over at Romans 3, starting in verse 9. Romans 3, 9. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of ask is there is under their lips. Those whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And in the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You look at verse 11. It says, there is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. I got this from the Nelson Study Bible for verse 11. It says, they don't understand spiritual truth. 
They are not diligently seeking after God. The people that Paul is talking about here are satisfied just being religious. Yeah. Look at verse 12. They have turned aside. That turned aside means turning away from God. And this one really got me. They have, be, they have together become unprofitable. Unprofitable there is useless to God for his purpose. Yep. How would you like to hear that when you get home? In verse 13 here, Paul is quoting from the Psalms. He says, Paul is using images, three body parts, six body parts, sorry, six body parts, tongue, throat, lips, mouth, feet, and eyes. You get the picture here, the entire body is completely corrupt. 14, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Humans away from God are not a blessing. They are often cursing, not loving, but more bitter. 15, their feet, their feet are swift to shed blood. Sounds like America today, don't it? Or human beings today. Verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. That fear of God is respect, it's a reverence of God. People without God are spiritually dead. They produce only deceit, damage, and destruction. The third point we're going to look at is the price of being sent. I think I did this last year. It was daylight savings time, too, and that clock always throws me off. The price of being sent. In a world that desperately needs the peace of God, we might think the message of peace would be welcome. However, Christ paid a great price for being the one sent as the living embodiment of peace. Christ's ambassadors advancing his eternal kingdom will be received similarly. Peter wrote, for, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. That's from 1 Peter 2.21. Going to look at quick four points on that. One, Jesus paid the price of leaving heaven to come to earth. See that Philippians. You okay? Philippians 2. Look over there real quick. Philippians 2. Look at 5-12. Let this mind be, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. Again, Jesus left his home in heaven to come here for us. Jesus paid the price of hate. He paid the price to leave heaven and come to earth. He paid the price of hate. John 15, 18. I'll just summarize here. If the world hates you, it hates it hated me first. Jesus paid the price of ridicule. Look at Luke, Luke 16. Luke 16, 14. Sixteen fourteen reads, Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. That derided him is the same as ridicule. The last one here is Jesus paid the price by bearing our sins through his death on the cross. Hebrews, thir Hebrews thir 13. Hebrews 13. This message is a little different than what Pastor was talking about earlier about persecution, but it's you'll see where it's going. Hebrews 13, 4 and 5. Marriage is honorable among all, and bed in the bed undefiled, but fornicators and daughters, God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He prayed the price on the cross. 
There's a couple called named Edgar and Isabella. They led a church in Buenaventura, considered to be one of the most dangerous cities in Colombia. The couple ministers by caring for the needs of the community, which has drawn negative attention from the guerrillas who control that area. Through Edgar and Isabella's ministry, many have placed their faith in Christ, and he lives and lives. Lives have been transformed, which has brought further opposition. Their lives have been threatened. They have been forced to move several times, but they remain committed to sharing the hope of Christ. Earlier this year, Isabella was held at gunpoint by her brother-in-law, wow. a commander in the guerrilla uh, in the guerrilla army, while Edgar was trapped and unable to help. Though her brother-in-law was in initially arrested, officials released him. He has threatened Isabella again, and she and her children have not been able to leave their house since his release. She and the children also suffer significant chronic health issues. Each of us can be inspired by the faithfulness of the witnesses, by the faithful witnesses of our persecuted Christian brothers and sisters like Edgar and Isabella and like the Martinez family to count the cost of their own bold witness. I found this is really interesting quote from Richard Warmbrand. Uh, Richard Warmbrand was uh, in the movie Tortured for Christ. If you want the movie, it's in the library. You can take it and watch it. It's a really great movie. Uh, but Richard Warmbrand founded the Voice of the Martyrs. He says it was strictly forbidden to preach to other prisoners. This is while he was in jail. It was uh, it was understood whoever was caught doing this received a severe beating. A number of us decided to pay the price for the privilege of, of preaching. So we accepted their terms. That's the communist. Careful who you vote for, Tuesday. It was a deal. We preached and they beat us. We were happy to be preaching. They were happy to be beating us. So everyone was happy. What a, what a testimony that is. We're going to get down to the fourth and final point here. The power of being sent. Even so, I am sending you, he says in John 20, 21. It was no surprise to God that his own that his one and only son would be rejected, ridiculed, hated, and killed. Sharing the message of peace with God and the mission of redemption demands accepting that same risk. How are, how are biblical disciples like the Martinez family and Edgar and Isabella able to fulfill the calling of God as they are sent by God to advance the gospel while facing extreme opposition? Biblical disciples are not sent in their own power but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Turn over to Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria until the ends of the earth. Jesus promised that their power would come from the Holy Spirit. That is the third person of the Trinity. Biblical disciples are not sent with their own words. You can see that in Luke 12, 11 to 10. If God sends you, he'll give you the words. Don't be afraid to speak out. No. Biblical disciples are not sent with a human plan. Look over quickly, Matthew 28. This is the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Twenty-eight, eighteen to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always 
even to the ends of the age. Our knowledge of God's missionary command demands our obedience. Our obedience to say yes to the direction of God for our witness is not dependent upon some type of superior knowledge. Rather, our obedience is fueled by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit as we walk obediently in the mission field before us. May each of us hear God clearly have, may each of us hear God clearly and have feet that are quick to obey at any cost. That's the end of that part, but I want to just ask you, church, what are you willing to do? What lengths are you willing to go to? Uh, not long ago when Pastor spoke on this, he was called to go to Nepal. I didn't know how he was going to afford it, but it was provided. God made a way, and he went to Nepal, and he did what he had to do. Now, I, I on the other hand, uh, Pastor Zishan, is he still on? Is Zishan still on? He got it. Uh, Pastor Zishan was on, but uh, he's asked me plenty, a number of times to come to Pakistan and and help teach over there. I told him, and my mom's going to get mad at me for this, but I told him if the Lord provides, I'll go to Pakistan. If that's what it takes, if that if if God's telling me to go to Pakistan to help minister over there, and that if it's provided, then I'll go. What are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go? As we go close now and get ready to take a time in prayer, I want you to pray for all the frontline workers in Columbia's red zones and for the opportunity of personal surrender to being sent wherever God leads. Pray for the voice of the martyrs and the workers around the world. They have everywhere in all the restricted areas and the, and the um, areas all over I can't think of the word I wanted to use, but there's a map on the wall in the hallway. You can see the hostile areas and you can see where it's it's the the really bad areas. I pray for our FGBI, men and women that are in these hostile countries like Pakistan and others, uh, Nigeria, uh, Sudan. Um, where's uh, Zambia? Zambia. Uh, pray for these people. Uh and also, like we said before, it's not just around the world. Persecution of Christians is on our own soil. It's happening here in America. Uh, be in prayer for that. Also, uh, continue being in prayer for all those in Israel. Yeah. Uh, for the Israelis that are being held hostage over there in, uh, well, the other Israel, because it is Israel. Palestine, be praying for these people. Be praying for all of those uh, that are willing to go and listen for what the Lord has to tell you. And if he says to go, you go. You do what you got to do. But remember all of these as we uh, close here. And I thank you for your time. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this short time. Uh, Lord, thank you for the information that you gave me to present. I thank you, Lord, for all these people that are willing to stand and defend the faith of Jesus Christ all around the world. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in FGBI that are around the world. Uh, Father, that you keep them safe. Brother Emo, uh, our brother Zishan, and all the others, Lord. Thank you for them. Thank you for the FGBI that is getting free grace message all around the world. Thank you, Father. Father, remember this church. Thank you for Westside and for all that you've done for us, Lord. Uh, Father, we give you praise and glory. We love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Uh, as Pastor comes to give the closing, uh, can we pray for you? Please. You want to come over here? Yes. Because uh, I've asked someone special to pray for you today. Brother uh, Vernon, if you want to unmute, uh -huh. lead, us, lead us off in prayer, and Pastor Burris will close us out. And, um,
our pastor will give us the blessing. Amen. Vernon, if you want to go ahead, brother. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this awesome service, Lord, this awesome teaching that we received today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we would all take it to heart and just take it and just, just pray on it and just continue to grow in the knowledge of you, Lord, our Lord and Savior. And Lord, I want to just lift up to you, Pastor, Dad, and Mom, as they go out on their trip this week, that's going to be out, Lord, we ask for prayer, for safety, to keep them safe and just provide for them, protect them, Lord. And we pray for the opportunity to also Share the gospel while they're out, Lord. We just thank you for all that you will do for them, Lord. And we ask the same for the leadership that will be taken over in his absence. We pay, pray for strength and boldness for the teachers that, that will be leading the classes. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that we all will continue to learn and grow together, Lord. We just thank you for this church, this church family, and all that you do for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 What a privilege. Pastor Burris is going to close us in prayer. But remember to pray for our pastors through the months. Uh, he's actually going on a mission trip, you could call it. Oh, yeah. You know, he's uh, going out to speak to this young man and uh, hopefully make sure there's an understanding of the message of life. So <clears throat> keep him in and Miss Crystal in prayer and the family. And before we go to, I want to just remind you that the mission field is just outside those doors. Yes. Yeah. That's the go place. Yes. And I encourage you to pick up the gospel tracks we have in the back, the yeah. gospels of John, make it a habit of carrying those with you. And don't just leave them for the waitress. Yes. A lot of people do that. Hand them out, give it to people, ask them to read it. Uh, that's the mission field. Uh, you know, you say, well, the Lord's never called me to go to, you know, to, to serve in Pakistan, <laughs> but he has called you to serve in Sharpsville yes, and yes. your neighbors and Hermitage and, and Greenville and all the places around here. That is your mission field. Yes. Uh, so uh, make the effort, pick them up, uh, it, clean the track rack out today. A lot of times we talk about this and nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. It's been Let's a long make time. It happen since, today. It's been a long time since I had to order tracks. It'd be nice to I have to go order some more. Yeah. Pick them up, hand them out. The Gospels of John. I've got a whole box of 100 Gospel Johns that I got just for this trip. I'm going to try and come back with none. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to try and track them all the way across the country and just see what Amen. happens. Amen. There you go. Just, you just go and serve and tell and wait and see what, what God's yes. going to do. Amen. Yes. So many good things. And we thank you and covered your prayers and... Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to be able to do this. Brother Dean? The other thing is, if you do leave a track for a week or two, Oh, yeah. Leave yes. good money. Yes. 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 And treat them right. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes that, absolutely. Yeah, I, I always say, if you leave a track, you better do at least enough of a tip that they're going to go, wow. Yeah. Uh, Remember when you, you're a representative of Christ. That's right. right. They're not yeah. going to see Christ if you leave them a dollar. <laughs> that's right. Not that's exactly correct. So, yeah, those are all important things. All right. I commend you now to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of this earth. For you have died and your life is hid with Christ and God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, and peace be with you. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hmm? Oh, yes, I do want to sing a last song. <laughs> I forgot. It's okay. We threw you off. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I had Vernon pray. It really threw me off. That's great. Hands of us. He was ready to go. He was ready to go. Let's all stand. Of course, thank you, Lord. 5.13 in the hymn. We need it. <laughs>
Dear Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you do for us, Lord. We just thank you for a uh, a great great day in your house, Lord, and a day where we could celebrate not only just celebrate you, but Lord, we also learned a lot too, Lord. Thank Help you. us to remember those things, retain, go back through it, Lord, and then also keep praying for uh, the ones who are being persecuted, especially our our men that are going through the or in FGBI and. And uh, just what's coming on it right here in America, Lord, and what may happen just right after a couple of days from now, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we need to be lifting our hands up to you, Lord, be reaching out to those. And Lord, even though we may think we need to not say anything, Lord, Lord, our words need to come from you. Lord, and if you allow us to say things, Lord, we need to say it. That's right. Let us be bold, Lord, because, Lord, it's about when we come home, we need to be able to hear well done. Hey, not, yes. not here, yes. you wicked lazy servant, just yeah. because we didn't want to do something. For you. Let us be willing, Lord, to do the things for you, Lord, as you, you've done everything else for us. Lord, Lord oh. so many people need to know about you, Lord, and right. let us reach those, Lord. And yes. we pray for Pastor and Crystal as they, they take off, Lord, for this, this long trip, Lord. And mm -hmm. Lord, Prepare their minds as they go across and prepare Tanya and Abigail as well, yeah. Lord, and pray that as they are there, Lord, they can be able to reach AJ and, and my Lord and, and this precious baby, Lord. Yes. Lord, uh, as they go, Lord, give them the safety as they travel. We love you, Lord, and as they tra will travel back, Lord, too. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise okay. God. Thank you, church. We love you. Keep losing your time. I'm going to yeah. try and be online to say hi to you. We'll see. You before see you. That's fine. I hope. Get a view. Great view. Thank you. Very gallery. Look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, baby.